The call for stricter gun laws has taken center stage since the mass murder of 20 children and six students, or six adults rather, at Sandy Hook Elementary School. But the editors of one local newspaper, they didn't wait for lawmakers to take action. They took a dramatic step on their own. The Journal News, the newspaper for the Lower Hudson Valley, published the names and addresses of gun permit holders in Westchester and Rockland counties and is fighting to do the same in Putnam County. But Putnam is fighting back. It's a case of freedom of speech versus the freedom to bear arms. The Journal News first posted an article last month that revealed the identities of all pistol permit holders in Westchester and Rockland counties in New York's Hudson Valley. But when they tried to obtain the same information for a third county, Putnam, they were denied, even though publishing the names is legal. The law is crystal clear and has stated for years that the name and address of any pistol licensee is indeed a matter of public record. But there's been fierce public backlash. One local lawmaker vowing to protect the law-abiding gun owners of his county from the newspaper. I will fight with you until hell freezes over, and then we're going to fight on the ice. We're going to hold this Journal News editorial board accountable. The elementary school massacre in Newtown, Connecticut is what sparked it all, and in that state, another newspaper is embroiled in its own controversy. Westchester Collectors is holding a gun show this weekend in Stamford, Connecticut, even though the town's mayor asked them to cancel it. But what made things even worse, this shocking mistake in the Stamford Advocate newspaper, an ad for the gun show appearing on the same page as a story about the Sandy Hook students returning to school. The advocate apologized, saying, quote, Our newspaper should not be running gun ads, including ads for antique and collectible gun shows, next to stories about Sandy Hook. It's insensitive and it shouldn't have happened. Back in New York, hazmat crews were called to the Journal News after it received an envelope containing white powder. That powder turned out not to be toxic. And the Journal News, by the way, hired armed guards for protection against the backlash. So, guys, it seems to me that there are two different questions here. The easy question first is, is Putnam County right in refusing to divulge this information, even though they appear to be legally obligated to do so? They are not right in refusing to do what they are obligated to do. I. I go back and forth on this. If you own a gun and you have a permit and you have a carry permit or a permit to have a gun in your house, it's not something you be, should be ashamed of if you're out there defending that right to do it. At the same time, there are uh, security concerns because you're publishing a list and personal information of people with guns in their homes. You're asking people who want to steal guns, here's a list of homes you can burgle to, 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 to you know, that, that have, that have we're, weapons. We're, we're, yeah. With the journal, what the, what the Putnam County local government is mm -hmm. doing, I can understand the, the the argument they're making. But what I don't understand is that this is not the Wild West. They don't get to decide policy, the local officials, mm -hmm. simply because they want to do what they want to do. It's called the Freedom of Information Act for a reason. News organizations have fought for this for years. And thus, it, it, you know, if I were on the other side of this, I would go in federal court so fast just to force their hand and make them to release the information. So you wonder if the political leaders of the county are scoring points with electors by, by doing that. Jessica, do you want to defend what Putnam, Putnam County is doing? Absolutely. First of all, what the Journal do, News did was both reckless and irresponsible and didn't serve any other purpose except to further their own personal agenda. And I think they were absolutely right for saying it is a safety concern they put at risk not only legal gun owners, but people that choose not to own a firearm as well. There's domestic violence, retirement law enforcement officials that own firearms and, and you you provided a map to criminals that are going to go in and but, but, could but, steal but these guns. Can we guns. agree that these are public records? Can, can we agree that? that there we, is we a question agree. on that because it's up in the air. If you look at the law, it said the law does not permit uh, disclosure that that constitutes an unwarranted personal violation of personal privacy, which I think could technically fall into this. And if you look at Mayor Bloomberg, who is one of the most outspoken gun control advocates, said it was a bad idea, and that when he was asked for it years ago, they denied the request. So I think whether or not they actually are legally allowed to do this is still up in the air. And just because you can do something does not mean that you should. Okay, and now to the wider question, and I have a feeling it's gonna be me against the entire panel on this one, but I honestly do not see the harm in putting together a registry of gun owners with public information made available by counties or states and having that be available to anybody who wants to look up and see if there are any guns in their neighborhood. What's no, the harm no. in doing that? It, 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 there is a threshold issue. If you are a licensed physician, if you are a nurse, if you are an attorney, anybody could go online and get your contact information. 
Um, it's just something professionals do. If they're licensed and they benefit from that license, then their information is readily accessible by anybody. Can the same argument be made for owning a gun and having a gun in your house? I, I think it can be uh, reasonably stated. I just think the, the security risks and the, and the safety risks outweigh uh, what may be legal and permissible. And if you look at what the, the first of all, the intention of the FOIA law was <coughs> to provide disclosure, but it's not to invade people's personal you know, rights. It's about government disclosure, public officials, where your money is being spent. You look for things like salaries and things like that. I probably but agree with most of that, but I, I don't agree that nothing has come of this. I think it's an important discussion to have, and a classy thing for the paper to do would be to win the lawsuit, get the information, and shred it. Mm. Well, publishing it on an online database is is also a whole other thing. It's one thing to go and say, I'm going to look up this information or, you know, have it be a public record. It's another thing to put it on a map on the Internet. But but here, here are the, the two arguments that come to mind. One is that this, this question about whether we're putting people at risk, these are people who are gun owners, and I thought the whole point of having a gun was protecting your home and protecting your family, and so you've got that additional level of protection. But secondly, there are so many other bits of information that are available for public record. If you are a member of a political party, that's a public record. If you give a campaign to a political, uh, or if you give a donation to a political campaign, that's public record. You could be targeted for your political views. When you buy a house, that's published in the newspaper, your name, where you live, and how much you paid for it. Ha that, doesn't that put You're people at risk just as much? You're treating gun owners like it should be a sex offender registry. I mean, it's stigmatizing them. And having your political affiliation is a lot different than owning a firearm where the one of the biggest problems with gun violence is the illegal guns on the street. It's not c crimes being con committed by legal gun owners. So you're opening yourself up to be have a potential criminal rob your home to steal that gun to use it in a crime later on? Are you going to dispute that that's not well, a but, potential but, huge but, threat to a law-abiding citizen? Newtown, the guns there were legally purchased right. by the guy's mother, and, and if the neighbors knew, maybe, th maybe they knew, maybe they didn't know, I, I don't see why they wouldn't want to have that information. Well, the issue of what government should do and what they can do and what's ministerial and what they have discretion around has gotten conflated with this issue of gun ownership and public safety and, and security and home. I don't know that they necessarily belong together right now, but you know, that it'll be litigated. Finally, you really think anybody out there who would buy a gun or who's interested in buying a gun wouldn't buy it if they knew that their names were going to go into a database that everybody could access? Absolutely. I see that as happening. Yes. Really? Yes. yes. Why? Why, why, do you need, why do you need the hassle? A why, why, why do you, I, I can't see the other side of the argument. Mm -hmm. If you're purchasing a gun, why do you want the hassle of your information being public? I mean, it's not nobody. It's a hassle. It's a risk. It's a, it, it could is, be a huge a risk. risk. Domestic violence victims, these women that you know keep guns for their own protection, now are opening themselves up to you know a potential attack. That's crazy. I'm glad we could have the wider discussion, which I hope is the way that this whole issue gets dealt with going forward, even though all three of you are wrong. We're, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break on RFL. We want you to keep this conversation going online. Head over to Facebook, head over to Twitter, sound off, tell me why you think I'm wrong. If you purchase a gun, should your information be made public, feel free to start your response with, hey, Andrew, you idiot, dot, dot, dot. We're going to take a quick break here on RFL. When we come back, we're going to hear from this man, not me, him, Judge Glenn Berman. He presided over one of the most high-profile cases of 2012, the trial of Darun Ravi, who was sentenced to jail time for spying on his former roommate's tryst with another man. He, that, that man or that roommate later jumped to his death. It was a difficult decision for the judge. It captured the attention of the nation. We're going to hear from Judge Berman next.